So as I enter the room, I have to check that the scene is safe. Hi, good morning. My name is Mark. I'll be your nurse for today. How would you like me to call you? Jane. Hi, Jane. Is it alright if I just draw the curtains for your privacy? Alright. Let me just draw the curtains. Let me begin this station for the seven steps of hand hygiene. I've already washed my hands with soap and water. Um, is it alright if I just carry on with the hand rub? Alright. Alright, let me just do the hand hygiene. Palm to palm, back of my hands, fingers interlaced, fingers interlocked, rotational rubbing of the thumb, fingertips, wrist, wrist, and I let my hands dry. So Jane, I'll just make sure that I'm speaking with the right patient. Can you tell me your full name and your date of birth, please? Jane Jones, date of birth is 1st of the 1st, 1960. Alright, that's Jane Jones, 1st of the 1st, 1960, and your hospital number is... One, two, three, four, five, six. I can see it's the same as your wristband and in the documentation in here. Are you allergic to any food, medication, latex, or any dressing? I have no allergies. I can see it's also documented in here. You don't have any allergies. Are you comfortable right now, Jane? Yes. Are you in pain? No. All right, that's good. Let me just come, um, position you comfortably and I'll just remind you to not cross your legs all throughout this procedure, all right? So the very reason that I'm here today, Jane, is I will be doing a series of assessment and I will be asking you questions so that we can effectively plan your care. Uh, may I just know what brought you into the hospital today? Okay, you have um, frequency of urination. All right, so don't worry about that. We will carry on with the assessment so that we can um, figure out what's going on. All right, now I'll just make sure, assessor, I'll make sure that all the communication aids are present with the patient. And I have here a machine that's clean, calibrated, and ready for use. All right. Let me now begin my assessment. To start with, I will be checking the blood pressure of the patient. I will make sure I will use an appropriately sized BP cuff. And I will check for the patient's preference, which arm he would want me to use. And then I, for that preferred arm, I will then check for any signs of infection or any cannula present or any previous surgery. I will wrap around the BP cuff around 80% on the patient's arm and then I will make sure that it, um, it is about two pink finger beds above, above the antecubital fossa and then the uh, artery index marker is in line with the brachial, um, brachial pulse. And um, I will instruct Jane that there will be an arm tightening but that is pretty normal. Now I will move on to check the oxygen saturation of the patient. I will insert a, an oxygen probe to the finger of the opposite hand of the patient, making sure that that finger is not cold and clammy, does not have any nail varnish, and capillary refill comes back less than two seconds. I will insert now the probe. I will now be checking the temperature of the patient. I will make sure to use a tetanic thermometer with a disposable um, air probe. I will ask Jane for the preference of which ear to use and check if there is any presence of any um, earphone or any hearing aid. I will remove that and that if there is any. If there is none, I will just continue. I will instruct, I will just check and assess the ear if there are any obstruction, signs of inflammation or infection or previous surgery. If there's none, then I will insert the I will snugly insert the thermometer to the patient's ear and then I will instruct Jane that there will be a quick sound and that's pretty normal. Afterwards, I will just throw the disposable ear probe to the clinical waste bin and I will make sure that all the attachments to the patient are detached and making sure this machine is clean, calibrated and ready for use. And now I will proceed to checking the pulse rate of the patient, I'm asking for the consent to hold the arm of the patient, and then I will palpate for the radial pulse, making sure that I take note of the strength, rate, and rhythm, and then I will count the beats for one full minute. And then afterwards, I will visually observe the rise and fall of the chest, taking note of the depth, rate, and pattern, and then I will count the cycles for one full minute. All right? So I already now have performed my assessment. I will now be documenting the results. So I will now write the full name of the patient, Jane Jones, date of birth, 1st, 1960. Date of mission is today. The date is today and the time is today. Where the respiration is 18, that's a score of zero. Um, assessor, what scale, which scale is the patient on? Is it scale one or scale two? Scale one. Scale one, so I will exclude scale two. 
I will now um, document the oxygen saturation, which is 98. That's the score of zero. And then the, is the, uh, the patient is breathing on air, so that's also a score of zero. The blood pressure of the patient is 130 over 80. That's the score of zero. The pulse rate is 81, so that's the score of zero. The patient is alert. That's the score of zero. Temperature is 37.5. That's also a score of zero. So to, total new score is a score of zero. I will just write my initials. And then for the frequency of monitoring, um, for a score of zero, it's a mini minimum of 12 hourly continuous uh, routine news monitoring. But since the patient is a new admission, I will monitor the patient every four hours. So I will just write four and there is no need for escalation. I will affix my, uh, I will affix my initials. So I'm done with my observations. But Jay, I'll just carry on with my um, assessment. I'll just ask you a, uh, a few series of questions. I'd like to know, do you smoke? Yes. All right, I can see that you smoke. Um, do you have any plans of tapering down your smoking? No. If that is the case, that's all right. But let me just remind you that this hospital is a smoking-free, a smoke-free um, hospital. So I'll just make sure that your cigarette is locked in your cupboard. And let me just uh, uh, let me know if you need, um, if you feel the urge to smoke, so I can ask the doctor to prescribe you with any um, nicotine patch. And then, um, I also would like to know, Jane, do you drink alcohol? Yes. yes. All right, I can see that in our tool, assessment tool here, you're scoring a, a score of 12. That's actually a bit high of us. Uh, that's actually indicates an increased rate risk for drinking. Um, do you have any plans of tapering down your drinking? No. All right. Then um, don't worry about that. Just in case in the future you change your mind, I will give you this healthy lifestyle leaflet. All the contact numbers um, for our alcohol liaison team is there. So you can just um, contact for support when you decide to taper down your drinking. Now let me just know, Jane, are you, um, how are you on your feet? I'm all right. Okay. Um, do you use any um, walking aid? No. Yes. Okay, you use a walking uh, walking frame. So don't worry about that, uh, Jane. I will refer you to the physiotherapist so you can um, you will be taught on how to appropriately use it. All right. And um, is there anything else that you'd like me to assist you with? No. No. All right. So if there is none, then um, here's the call bell. You can always just press the orange button. I or my colleague will come to your assistant. I open the curtains. Let me just open the curtains and let me just end the station with the seven steps of hand hygiene. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Done.